Minister Felix, let us talk a little bit about the work of the Citizenship Ministry in terms of managing our ports for illegal entry, ensuring that our immigration services are, are being operated and are built effectively at, at those ports. Thank you very much. And um, the Ministry of Citizenship is like a gatekeeper uh, for the nation in terms of ensuring that persons enter this country and live in conformity with the laws and the conditions of, of stay. In terms of monitoring our ports of entry, you will recognize that we have ports at the airports, we have ports at um, Springlands area. You have ports, you have the seaports. These are all ports. Mm -hmm. But I think the more of these, these ports are manned routinely by immigration officers. But I think the ports which would cause some challenge would be the ones on the Ruperuni border, the Kayuni, Mazaruni area, and the Region 1 areas, they are most vulnerable because you can lit literally walk across or sail across in a boat, right? And that's where our major challenge would arise because the law requires that a person who enters the country by a land border must report to the nearest police station. Now, persons cross at points where the police station might be about five, six miles apart. So you would recognize immediately that there would be breaches of, of the law in that area. And therefore, over the years and with the development uh, taking place in the country, people, more people populating the areas and so on, we ought to be able to establish a heavier presence um, in those areas. Because in the border locations, the immigration work is not just done by immigration officers, but by the policemen there who receive and write up the border immigration cards. Now, Long term, long term, we are looking at the establishment of we are looking at the establishment of information technology to sort of have a, like a electronic visa, what they call e visas. Mm -hmm. um, which would move away from the ordinary stamping and minimizing fraud. That those would be the benefits of the e-visas. We would also be looking at the decentralization um, with respect to the processing of applications for passports and the delivery of those passports. And I want to make this very clear, is that the preparation of the books, the passport book of itself, is not an issue now being considered for decentralization. That will remain where it is. But definitely we can receive applications online where that is necessary. We would if progressively be moving towards that sort of activity, given that we get the fiber optic cable and the, the, the going. The, once we get the infrastructure available, we can then start considering the 
a paperless system where, again, insofar as the infrastructure will allow us, we will receive applications for passports online. That is an area um, being considered on our long-term projections. There is also, um, well, when I spoke of decentralization, right now the decentralization merely relates to the collection or the issuing of the books after they are prepared. Yeah. In my own thinking, we should be doing also the receipt of applications um, from residents. That is like a medium term um, projection, uh, which would enable us, given that the infrastructure is there, because what we would be doing we would, be, would be requiring the use of information technology. But would we, oh, are we talking about creating an office in Barbies, Sesequibo, maybe some part of the hinterland in, the, in, in that regard? So that instead of persons from Barbies coming all the way to the central passport office, are we talking about that where they can actually go? Well, actually, them? I can tell you that in New Amsterdam, in New Amsterdam, as well as in, I think it is, in the Corifaton area, mm -hmm. areas, yeah. there are buildings already there where the passports, from where the passports are issued. So okay. that is in place. In New Amsterdam, I think it is at the police headquarters in New Amsterdam at the head of Coburg Street. In Springlands, I think it's the, what, we used, what was known once as the old immigration building. What about, are there plans for the hinterland area? Well, we, we are doing some work uh, in Bartico on a particular day and at Letem on a particular day. But we have to be careful that the areas where we choose to deliver passports has the volume. Because you don't want to be paying an airfare for just one passport, yes, right? Yes. It must um, be cost effective. While you serve the public, it must also have some cost effectiveness in it. I know your ministry came in for some criticisms recently with an issue which was absorbed in the press. Minister, let us talk a little bit about um, illegal entry of persons who are not Guyanese into our mining sector in particular. Well, let, let, let me break it down for you while I will deal with the mining sector. Let me talk about illegal immigration as a subject. We have to ensure that at our ports, those who arrive have visas. Those who arrive and are not citizens must have a return ticket. That's the first problem, and that is almost international. If you're accustomed to traveling, the moment you arrive at certain ports, they observe your passport, they ask you for your ticket. You know why they ask for your ticket? To see if you have a return ticket. Right? They don't want a buildup of persons who want to use their port uh, to get a better life and thereby increase the population of illegals in the country. So these control mechanisms must be in place. The second aspect is that with mining in Guyana, I am aware that very many sponsors bring people legal, legally into Guyana to work in the mines, in the okay. gold field. There are those two who would cross the border and find their way in the mining areas. There are those who have come in legally but would have overstayed their time for various reasons. 
and have not been able to get the extension of their initial visas. And the illegality starts there. So our, our job is that we have to be able to know whose visas have expired and when. We need to develop that capacity. It is sometimes like in certain countries, it is difficult to pursue um, illegal immigrants because of the size, ex uh, extent of the country. It's difficult to really pinpoint where people are. But at least you must know, right? And that is what we would be working towards, knowing who are the illegals, um, or how many illegal immigrants are in the country. That's what, that's what we need to determine at any given period. So those who criticize us must know that illegal activities are thriving um, on our shores. They must know that. It is not something recent. It has been going on. What is perhaps surprising for many of them is that there is now a public revelation that persons come here under circumstances which are illegal and action is being taken against them. Minister, finally, before you go, um, now that Budget 2015 is on the table, can you point us to maybe two immediate programs or projects that we can see um, implementing or coming on stream? Well, let me tell you one instantly. Soon after we took office, there were complaints by members of the diaspora mainly in the United States, of having to wait three or four months when they apply for a passport. We have taken that on with the principal aim of improving the length of time that the members of the diaspora will wait for the, to receive their passports. And we have gone into $11 million debt to bring in workstations so that we can dedicate those stations to um, preparing the passports applied for by members in the diaspora. Interesting. We have had instances where four months elapsed without, and they, without getting the passport. But what I guarantee. I have no control, or we would not have any control, about the application made in a particular country. We would have no control how long it takes for the application from that country to get to foreign affairs or get direct immigration. What we do have control of is once it gets to immigration, we will take no more than five days to process the application. Thank you, Minister. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Done.